now call the Shadow Secretary of State, Hilary Benn. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr Speaker. Can I take this opportunity to welcome to the front bench team my honourable friend, the member for Putney, and to express my thanks to the honourable member for Gower for all the service that she gave during her time as part of the Northern Ireland yeah. team. As the House will be aware, we do not support this bill. But I don't understand why the Secretary of State is seeking to overturn the amendments moved by Lord Murphy and passed in the other place yesterday. I listened very carefully to the arguments that the Secretary of State uh, just advanced, but I don't think that they stand up because the Lord's amendments would not take away from the Commission the ability to issue immunity to an individual who comes forward and gives truthful evidence about what happened. It's not a veto, this amendment's not a veto, but it would allow the families of those who were killed or seriously injured in the Troubles, and I understand that there are <coughs> relatives of those murdered with us in the gallery today still seeking justice. It would give them the chance to have some voice in the process. And the other provision relating to licence conditions that would apply to the person seeking immunity. I acknowledge what the Secretary of State just said about other changes have been made to the bill, but looking at them, they seem very sensible and reasonable to me, including the requirement um, that the individual in question should not approach or otherwise communicate with a victim in the case of injury or a victim's family in the case of a death unless they consent. So we will vote against the government's motion to disagree with the Lord's amendments uh, today. Um, the Secretary of State has talked uh, quite a bit about uh, disincentive to people uh, coming forward. I would just say to him that it's not entirely clear that immunity is going to achieve the purpose uh, that the government has for it. Given that every other means of justice is to be closed down, and given that the Commission appears to have a lifespan of only five years, those who have committed dreadful crimes only need to sit it out. And I just say this to the Secretary of State. If that were to happen, and after the five years are over, individuals start to talk about, or boast about, or write books about what they have done, how will he explain to the families of those they murdered why the government allowed the situation to arise. And that would be the consequence of taking away from people, which is what this bill does, the means of justice, however hard, however long, however uncertain. And I acknowledge the point the Secretary of State made about that. Now, Mr Speaker, this is the last occasion on which we will debate this highly controversial legislation, which concerns, of course, how we come to terms with the terrible legacy of violence and brutality during the Troubles in a way that can enable those most affected, the families, finally to know what happened to the person that they loved and to ensure that justice is done to hold those responsible to account. And I recognise, um, this is the first time I've talked about this, given I was only appointed on Monday, I recognise how hard this is. And I do acknowledge the changes that the Secretary of State has made to the bill during its passage, including the comment he just made that when he inherited it, he wasn't happy with it. But he must accept that this legislation does not command the confidence of the people to whom he is trying to offer reassurance and comfort. Now, the most important word in the title of the bill is reconciliation. And we all of us, all of us want that to happen. But the bill has self-evidently not achieved its aim because all the communities in Northern Ireland are very clearly not reconciled to its contents. Indeed, it is so striking to see the extent to which the government has failed to win the support for its approach. And the list of people and organisations who oppose this bill is frankly astonishing. All of the political parties in Northern Ireland, the churches in Northern Ireland, victims groups, the Northern Ireland Human Rights Commission, the former Victims Commission of the Irish Government, the Council of Europe, the United Nations, and most extraordinary of all, it is reported that the person who has been appointed as the Commissioner-designate, the highly respected Sir Declan Morgan, 
has recently said uh, that he would uh, expect legal action by the families of victims of the troubles to try and challenge the bill on whether it is compliant with the ECHR. Now, this is the scale of the coalition that the government has managed to range against itself. But instead of reflecting on this, its approach has been to put its head down and plough on regardless. And that is why, for all the government's good intentions, they have failed to win public confidence, even though the government said in 2018, and I quote, in order to build consensus on workable proposals that have widespread support, we must listen to the concerns of victims, survivors and other interested parties. Doing the wrong thing is not a justification for this bill. And if there is one lesson we must by now have learned about how to make progress in Northern Ireland is that it can only be achieved patiently, slowly, carefully, so as to build a consensus. I'm sorry to say that this bill does not do that, and I think it will not achieve the purpose which ministers claim for it. And that is why we are committed as the opposition, if we get the opportunity, to repeal it.